Welcome to Menopause Morph, your time to change. We're here to help you thrive through your menopause, bringing you experts in many fields to help you from perimenopause to menopause and beyond to become the strong, vibrant woman nature intended you to be. Hosted by Pauline McCarthy of the Pearls of Pauline. Pearls of wisdom, compassion, and joy. Hello, welcome to this week's Menopause Morph. Today we have lovely lady Uma Girish is going to talk to us. Uma is a grief guide, certified dream coach and award-winning author. Her latest book is a transformational memoir called Losing Ama, Finding Home, a memoir about love, loss and life's detours, published by Hay House. She's also the author of Understanding Death, 10 Ways to Inner Peace for the Grieving. Uma's short stories, articles and personal essays have been published in many publications and anthologies in as many as seven countries. She hosts a podcast called The Grammar of Grief on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. She is committed to helping women journey through the pain of grief and loss to help them transform their pain into purpose. Uma is the co-founder of the International Grief Council, which seeks to empower and educate the grieving through workshops, talks and panel discussions. You can find out all about her work at www.umagirish.com. U-M-A-G-I-R-I-S-H.com. So, welcome, Uma. Hi, Pauline. It's good to be here chatting with you. <laughs> Maybe a lot of people might be thinking, what has got grief counselling got to do with a menopause? But I think at this stage in our life, many people are losing their parents, also maybe losing their children because the children are leaving the nest. So I think it's quite pertinent to menopause. So could you tell us, what, how are you doing in your menopause journey? It's interesting. It's different, <laughs> for sure, and challenging in some ways. Well, I have some degree of insomnia. I would say that's my biggest challenge. Fortunately, I don't have any hot flashes, no night sweats, none of that. So I'm grateful that it's just insomnia. There is some weight gain. There is some thickening around the waist. I can't eat the desserts I used to eat as casually as I used to. So I'm having to be more careful about my diet and um, pay more attention to exercise, which has always been a part of my life, but I'm having to be more intentional about it now. Could you speak to us about grief at beginnings and endings? The menopause is a kind of beginning and an ending, isn't it? <laughs> It is. I think many women struggle with this idea that menopause is an ending. And in some ways, it does feel like an ending. But we must remember that everything in life follows a life cycle. Everything that is born must die. And everything that is born must also go through impermanence. Impermanence is the very basis of fundamental law of the human journey on on our planet. So we go through different phases of life. And if we just understand and appreciate that without clinging to any one stage or becoming defined by some stages and pushing against some others, then I think we will ease into menopause with a lot more grace and ease. I would say life is circular. Every ending contains with it a new beginning. So I don't believe that death is the end of something. It's not the end of physical life. When we are born, it's the death of our existence in the spiritual realm, and when we die in the physical plane, it is our re-entry, our rebirth into the spiritual realm. So if we look at life as a circular process, menopause is just a phase in that cycle. Every caterpillar must become a butterfly. You know, every adolescent must become a young adult. And uh, we have to move into menopause. So we must practice the art of letting go. And I think that's something a lot of us struggle with, not just menopausal women, but everyone in general struggles with this notion of letting go. And menopause is a phase when we are especially invited to embrace and surrender what used to be and move into the next chapter of our lives. It's like a trapeze artist, you know, if he's clinging to that bar, he's not able to get to the next bar. He has to let go of the bar he's holding on to in order to grab onto the next one. It's like a child learning to walk. If a child crawls forever, then there's no letting go and moving to the next stage. The child has to give up or let go of the crawling stage in order to become a toddler. And so menopause is very similar to that. We 
are being asked to let go of life as it used to be and move into a new phase, a new chapter. But it is a chapter that brings a lot of rich gifts. See that we mostly stay stuck in the space of what we are losing and how we're gaining weight and all the hormonal imbalances, the depression, all of that. And uh, because of that, we are more focused on what we are missing and not paying as much attention to what we are gaining. Yes. And what would you say women are gaining at this time of their life? I think menopause is a very special phase in one's in, in a woman's life, if she were to look at it like that, I think, whereas officially it is the end of the childbearing years, it is also an invitation to harvest one's life experience. It is the season of harvesting in a woman's life. I like to look at it like that. We've lived through enough life. We've lived through 50 years, at least. And so that's about half the journey. And through that journey, we have dealt with challenges. We have suffered many losses. We have also had many gifts and blessings showered in our lives. So I think it's a time to take stock of what's working well, what isn't, and what truly matters. We no longer have this angst that we had in our 20s and 30s about fitting in and about what people think of us and what we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to look. We move into life with more ease and grace because we feel more comfortable in our skin. I think we can live more authentically in these years because we have a clearer sense of who we are and what's really important in our lives. So I think if we looked at menopause with this attitude of how is it serving me and what are the gifts it's bringing to my life, then it would be so much easier to move into that phase of life. In Iceland here, I run the Immigrant Society, the Expatriate Society, and we had a discussion about how menopause is looked on differently in different cultures. You're born and raised in India, and now you're living in America. Have you experienced the difference between the way that more mature ladies are looked upon in Indian culture and Western culture? There is a very real difference in the way aging is uh, embraced in the East as opposed to the West. In my own personal experience, I've grown up with grandparents who lived at home and um, have had aunts who've gone into menopause and my grandparents and my, my grandmothers and the some of the women in the families. But I have never seen this level of angst around aging and the changing body, which I find uh, more of in the Western world. And I think it has to do more with this concept that if we are not young and we're not healthy and we are not able to rush and get so much done, somehow it's a reflection that we are not enough. So I think in terms of speed, the East moves at a different pace, although even that is changing. Like I said, nothing is permanent. So every culture is constantly going through a metamorphosis. Through my growing up years, I found that the pace in the East was very different compared to the West. And people didn't identify so much with this notion that if they were able to do more, they had more value. And I think in the West, youth is glorified, it is celebrated, and the elderly move into retirement homes and communities where they feel that they have no more significance, no more relevance. And that's a very fearful thing for many women. So they do everything they can not to embrace, ring to embrace aging. Every birthday that comes up after 50 is um, is a source of anxiety and worry. And I think uh, that's the biggest difference I find between the East and the West. Yeah. Tonight I was at a meeting with a friend of mine. We were, when we were chatting before the, we started the podcast, I was telling you about my friend that's here in, in Iceland. She's in Indian. And I always get such a, a, a calm feeling from her. You know, and she's, we were talking about uh, your book is called Losing Amma. And uh, in, in the Indian culture, this means, uh, Amma means mother. And in Icelandic, this means grandmother. You know, so tonight yeah. I, was, I was teasing her, you know, say, hello, Amma. Well, you know, are, are, are you a mother today or a grandmother? And, and she found this very happy. Uh, but what I find, like, in my, my background, my, my grandparents were Irish. We had, the, like, the, the, the grandparents, they weren't actually living at home, but they came almost every day. And... What I find is in modern society, that doesn't happen. And I think that's, it's, a bit, it's very sad for, for the children because the children don't get the wisdom of the older people. Yeah. You know? And even though I'm, you know, I'm 55, uh, but I started, my, I had my children quite later in life. So they're, they're still just teenagers. So I'm not a grandmother officially yet. <laughs> but 
I have um, when, when I when I meet younger people, I feel like I want to pass on my wisdom to them. And I think that when we go through menopause, we have this a lot of wisdom to to pass on. But I think in the Indian culture, this is more ingrained in society. People respect, especially women, they are respected more mm. for their wisdom. And what, how do you feel about this? What do you think we can teach Western people from the Indian culture? Yeah, that's right to an extent. Uh, the elderly in India are um, not afraid of aging because the older you grow, the more respect you garner. So there is no fear in moving into the 60s, 70s and 80s because we tend to consult with our elders when we make decisions. Like if there's a family wedding, if someone's taking up a new job, even buying a new home. We always consult with the elders in the family before making a decision. We take their blessings. Um, in fact, every time I left my grandmother's house after visiting with her, I would um, touch my, my forehead to her feet and take her blessing. Oh, so okay. that's the way we, yeah, that's the way we take the elders' blessing. How do you think, you know, you're, you're teaching people how to cope with grief. Like myself, I have a little bit of grief because my son will, my older son will be going on a world tour in, in a few weeks. And the younger son just went to college. So it's like, you know, the empty nest syndrome that they talk about. Yeah. And when you're giving grief counsel, you know, this is a grief. What kind of advice would you give to menopausal women who are having this empty nest syndrome? I think every stage of life brings some grief with it. It is kind of loss because officially it's the end of the childbearing years. And we all know that a woman's central role in life is your mother to bear children. And for most of us, at least traditionally, that has been ingrained in us, the idea of being a wife and a mother. And so officially, when that period of our life comes to an end, there is a sense of loss there. I mean, we know how fertility is, is regarded as such a valued quality. And uh, we, we've all seen how women who can't bear children, who have to go through artificial insemination or uh, adopt children because they are unable to bear children, bring so much sadness into their lives. So when a woman enters her menopausal years, it is the ending of that phase of life. Plus, we also have forgetfulness because of our hormonal imbalances. Emotionally, we are more vulnerable. There's all kinds of changes going on in the, in the body and the mind. But I would say that instead of fighting menopause, flow with it because it's a season just like the seasons of nature. Every season brings with it its gifts and menopause too brings gifts with it. So you don't have to like it. You don't have to like the fact that you're waking up with night sweats and having these hormones going crazy in your body, but you have to accept it. Acceptance is a very big piece of my grief work as well. And I think any stage of life that you are fighting against is an invitation to ask, what am I afraid of letting go here? And then understand that change and impermanence are built into the very fabric of life. Everything in life changes. I mean, look at the nature. Look at nature and her seasons. Summer has to give way to fall. Fall has to give way to winter and winter has to give way to spring. Every season is there for a short period of time and has to move into the next. It's the same with, with us. So I would say don't fight it. Claim it as a season of harvesting your inner wisdom and move into it. If you have any fears surrounding menopause about aging and your changing body, then find someone who can help you work through those issues is what I would say to women that are struggling because it is a season of life. It is a chapter of life. And if you harvest its wisdom, as Christian Northrup, the well-known author and spiritual teacher says, she's written a lot of books for women on menopause and yeah. this changing season of life. She says menopause is a time when the unfinished business of adolescence is finally waiting to be finished. <laughs> so everything that you haven't completed growing up will bubble up to the surface. And it is an invitation to finally make peace with people you haven't forgiven, um, regrets that you have, some guilt you're carrying, all this unfinished business. That's a big piece of my work in grief healing as well. So if you haven't dealt with those challenges, those challenges will come up for, for your attention now to heal it and let it go. So I would say acceptance. Life is impermanent. Don't cling to it, but flow with it. Wonderful. <laughs> and you were telling me that you were going to give a special offer to our listeners. Could you tell us more about that? The first three people who email me will get a 30-minute free consultation with me to speak with me and see what unfinished business is coming up for attention now through this season of menopause and how we can help 
make peace with it and resolve it. So email me at uma at umagirish.com. And that's U-M-A at U-M-A-G-I-R-I-S-H dot com. Thank you for that. I'm sure a lot of, uh, I know myself in January, I had a, a little heart problem and it really gave me a scare. And I began to think about all the people in my life that I had had a strong relationship with, you know, especially my ex-husbands, <laughs> plural. <laughs> and yeah. um, I tried to contact them just to see how they're getting on. Life is not permanent. We could die at any minute. And do you want to be on our deathbed and say, did I really find out how that person was getting on? Because every time I got divorced, it was always amicable. So th- there's no conflict there. But I, I somehow felt, hmm, it's been like 30 years and I haven't found out how they're getting on. And I think really I should because they were a really, really big part of my life. Yeah. But I think it's really true what you say that it, before when we had all these hormones making us think about children, producing children, getting married, having kids. and But now we don't have those hormones. So it's like our more internal desires are coming up and more spiritual things, trying to make peace with the world. <laughs> I won't grab one of those first three offers because that's for the listeners, not for me. But um, I, you've given me so much to think about. So I'm going to really take this in, into my, my heart and, and really think, what should I be doing? Not just physically, because sometimes we think about menopause, just the hot flushes and the memory loss. But actually, it's yeah. a very spiritual process as well, isn't it? It is. It is. It is tro- totally a spiritual process. You're absolutely right about that. It's an invitation to look at what unresolved in your life and life is giving you another chance to complete it. That's why it's bringing it up for your attention. And if you don't look at it and you turn away from it, then it, it remains with you. It dies with you. All the regrets, yeah. all the pain, the unfinished business of forgiveness, all of that dies with you. So I think we need to bless life for bringing it to our attention and then do what needs to be done to heal it. Yeah. So it's not called the change of life for nothing. <laughs> exactly. Of life. Yeah. <laughs> so Uma, thank you so much for being here on Menopause More. And I really look forward to our listeners contacting you and maybe you'll get in contact with me later and, and let me know how that went with them. And I, I'm sure all of us will be working through any grief we have in our life and coming out as beautiful butterflies at the end of it. <laughs> like As you said, the, the, the caterpillar must change into the, the butterfly. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Menopause Morph, your time to change. If you've enjoyed the program, be sure to subscribe to the next one and please leave a rating and review on iTunes to help us spread the message about thriving through the menopause. To get a free ebook, more menopausal resources, and to connect with Pauline, please visit www dot menopause morph dot com